In this first video, we will look at the principles for creating a buttons template in Knack Sport. A buttons template is what you use to register actions for your video, so you can easily review them in a timeline and then create presentations of your clips. The registered actions are also used to provide you statistical data, which can be viewed in a dashboard, matrix, or the different Excel exports that are available in Knack Sport. It is safe to say that a buttons template is the most important element of your Naxport workflow, as it affects every other part of your analysis process. Therefore, it is wise to dedicate your time to designing and creating a template that will provide you with all the video clips and analysis data that you need. Before even working inside Naxport, we recommend that you start to plan your template with pen and paper. You need to start at the end and work backwards when it comes to your template. Think amongst your team about what actions you would like to see and what data you would like to gather, as your template needs specific buttons to create these. There are two main types of buttons that you can create in a template, categories and descriptors. Please note that you can only create descriptors from the basic plus version of Naxport and above. You should also keep in mind the limit on the number of buttons you can create in a template for the basic and basic plus versions. So, what are the differences between categories and descriptors? Category buttons will create you a video clip for your specified action when you press it. These clips will be for a length of time that you determine in the button settings. So, you should use category buttons to make clips of big actions that you want to see, like a shot, goal or possession for example. You should think about how much video you want to see for these actions too what amount of time before and after the actions happen, which will become a pre and post setting for the button, or whether the clip is recording until you turn it off, so the category button will have the manual mode setting. Descriptor buttons are used to add extra information into the category clips that you make. So if you want to show differences between your main category actions, you can use descriptors to do this. For example, you could use the descriptors on target, off target, blocked and scored to add extra information to your shot category. Descriptors are useful for creating data and reviewing specific moments in your dashboard and matrix tool. Rather than just seeing the amount of shots, you could see how many shots were on target or how many shots were on target and saved for example. Remember that in the basic version you can't review a matrix and your dashboard can only show results for categories, as there are no descriptors in the basic version. Another popular use of categories and descriptors that should help to confirm your understanding of them is for when doing analysis of individuals. If you had each player as a category button, you can record each moment that they are involved in the game and see clips for all those times. You can then use descriptor buttons to show what type of involvements they are, like tackles, missed tackles, passes and shots for example. With this combination, your matrix and dashboard will be able to show you how many involvements each player has in a game, then the type of different involvements too. With this example in mind, you should know that descriptors are global buttons. This means that a descriptor can go into any category you want to associate it with. So if you had a template with 10 category buttons for players and wanted to record 5 different types of involvements, you would only need to make 5 different descriptor buttons rather than 5 for each player category. This is because descriptors are not linked to a specific category and can be pressed after any category to add that descriptor information into the clip. Now that you know the differences between category and descriptor buttons, you can look back at the list of things you would like to see and data you would like to gather, then determine what actions should be a category and what extra information can be added as descriptors. With these decided, we recommend that you also draw out your template with these buttons. One of the reasons for this is because you can look at getting the best flow for your template. Having an efficient template will save you time when registering actions so you can focus your time on creating presentations to help improve performance and understanding for your team instead. Think of the chain of notation for what you want to register. How often do things happen in your sport? 
Are there actions which always start to play? Are you looking at actions for yourself and your opposition? Are there descriptors which you would only press after certain categories? And so on. This understanding can help you to place your buttons better in the template to speed up your registering of actions. Put actions that follow each other close together in the template. Put actions that happen most often at the top or middle of your template, for example, with other actions as buttons that can branch out from these in the natural chain of notation. In the higher versions of Naxport, there are also additional tools like activation and deactivation links between buttons and the powerful panel flows for templates. If you are using a version of Naxport with those features, we recommend that you look at those tutorial videos to see what they can do for you as you can make your template flows and layouts even more efficient with those abilities. When thinking of this template layout, think of how this will look on your screen. Most often you will have your video player window and buttons template open on the same screen, so try not to make the template too wide, as you will only leave a small amount of space for the all important video window. Spending time planning your template with these principles will save you more time in the long run. A template will naturally evolve as you use it, and you may notice actions that you didn't think about that now require a button, but with good planning you shouldn't have to make too many drastic changes. In the next video we will look at creating a buttons template in Naxport with these principles in mind.